Hello friends, welcome to Shikshatri. In this video, we will again be talking about in center under the head of geometry. So let's start. Now in my first video on in centers, we had found out various things. So if we talk about what are the things that we had talked about, we had talked about uh, how to use various theorems along with angle bisectors and we had deduced what is an angle bisector theorem. Now what we will be doing in this video, we will be talking about the length of the sides whereas uh, along with that we will also be talking about the ratio of uh, let's say the in center versus other things inside the triangle. For that we will refer to this diagram. So this is the angle bisector theorem that we had talked about which we had established in the very first video and we will be using various concepts of these inside this triangle. So let us see first, so we are talking about the triangle ABC such that angle A, angle B and angle C are being bisected and the angles are bisected in such a way that we are now only talking about BS as a line segment which acts as a line, by, I mean line which is bisecting the angle B. Similarly, we are talking about the line segment CS which is bisecting the angle C and we are talking about the line segment AS which is bisecting the angle A and then I have dr drawn this dotted line. So from this point S which is acting as the in center. So if you would see in my first video S is nothing but I. So you can take the value of S as I. I mean S is nothing but this is just like trying to understand S is nothing but the in center. Why is it the in center? Because it is formed because of the intersection of the three angle bisector lines at S. So we have not extended this line now. So in the first video, the, the first uh, figure that we had talked about, we had extended the line such that all the three points were collinear. So here point C, S, R are not collinear to each other. All the three are not collinear means the point C, S, R is not lying on the straight line at the same time. Same with points B, S, Q, they are not collinear and same with A, S, P, they are not collinear, right? So if I take this angle as angle X, angle X, angle Y, angle Y, angle Z, angle Z, the very first thing that we can establish here is sum of all the interior angles of a triangle is equal to 180 degrees. So twice of X plus twice of Y plus twice of Z makes it equal to 180 degrees, which means X plus Y plus Z should be equal to a 90 degree, which we have done. Now, if this is X and we already know that this is a right angle because these are the three perpendiculars that we have drawn from S on the third side. Now, why do I call it as a third side? Because these two line bisectors, they intersect. So this becomes the third side. These two are the line, uh, I mean, these two lines are the angle bisectors. In that case, this becomes the third side and same here. So if this angle is X, this is 90, this becomes 90 minus X, same here, 90 minus X, same, this becomes 90 minus Z, this is 90 minus Z, this is 90 minus Y and this is 90 minus Y. I hope you'll be able to understand and do this yourself. Once we have done this, something that we had already established earlier also, we can say angle BSC is nothing but 90 degrees plus half of angle BAC, which we had already established earlier. Okay. Now this point we have already discussed, point B, point S and point Q, they do not lie on a straight line. I mean, this is not a straight line. This is not a straight line. This is not a straight line. This we have already discussed. Okay. Now, as discussed earlier, 2Ps, 1S and 1C concept is going to be very, very important throughout entire geometry, coordinate geometry, trigonometry as well. Right? So, now, can I say triangle BSP, BSP is congruent to triangle BSR, BSR, BSP and same we can say for other triangles also. These two triangles are congruent and these two triangles are congruent. Now we know that congruent triangles have equal areas. So can I say if this area is A1, this area will also be A1. If this area is A2, I'm sorry. 
So if this area is A1, this area will also be A1. If this area is A3, let's say A2, this area will also be A2. And if this area is A3, this area will also be A3. Which property are we using? This is the property that we had discussed at the time. I mean, in my video on congruency. Two congruent triangles will have equal areas and thereafter in the subsequent videos we had also established the fact two triangles having equal areas does not necessarily mean that they are congruent. They may or may not be congruent. But two congruent triangles will necessarily have equal areas. Okay. Next point. Now once we are able to establish this. Right. So it is just like we are trying to establish BPT. Now when we are establishing BPT, what are we doing basically? We just take the ratio of their sides and since these are congruent triangles, we can take the ratio of their sides equal to a 1. I mean when we take the ratio of these sides, meaning thereby I could have said BS is equal to BS, BP is equal to BR, SP is equal to SR. And the same thing you can do for other triangles also but this we will talk about this in this, in this figure. So we are going to talk about this point number 4 in this figure. So we'll talk about point number 4 here. Okay. Taking it forward, now we know that, now we all have already established the angle bisector theorem. So using the angle bisector theorem in point number 5, can I say BA upon BP? BA upon BP is just like saying this is equal to AS upon SP is just like saying this and when I talk about this triangle so this is when I was talking about the triangle ABP when I talk about the triangle ACP I can say AS upon SP is equal to AQ upon QC can we say this no we cannot then what will we say we will just use angle bisector theorem what is angle bisector theorem AS upon SP will be equal to AC upon CP is what we have used. Right? Once we have used this, now something very important for you to understand here. So what I'm assuming here is, I'm assuming if I'm taking a triangle like this. So let's say this is a triangle that I had taken. I'm just drawing it here. Such that this point is A, this point is B and this point is C. The length of the side that I'm taking opposite to a is small a, the length of this side is b and the length of this side, the third side bc is c. I repeat, the length of the line segment ab is c, the length of the line segment bc is a and the line segment ab, ac, the length is b. Okay, so then I have divided it further. If bp is equal to u, I mean this is the length that I have taken. In that case, the remaining length pc becomes a minus u. Similarly, if this length AQ is V, in that case the remaining length, this length becomes B minus V. Similarly, if I take this length, the length is AR. If I take this length as W, in that case the remaining length becomes C minus W. And then I have just used the BPT theorem. So we know that AS upon SP is equal to AB upon BP. Now AB, now AB is C divided by U is equal to CA upon CP. How much is CA? B upon CP which is A minus U. And then I just used these two and proved something. Now what have I proved? I have proved if I use this and solve this, I get this ratio C by U. Now what is C by U? I am basically getting the ratio AS is to SP only because AS upon SP is C by U. So if I'm able to get the value of C by U and the value of C by U comes out to be B plus C is to A. So can I say AS is to SP is just like saying, I mean, please just be attentive enough to understand this. AS upon SP is just like saying sum of these two sides, which is B plus C divided by the opposite side, which is A. Similarly, can I say BS is to SQ? And so on. But while doing this, there is a small hitch here. Now what is the hitch here? The hitch is I should not have taken this ratio. I mean, I know that this is not a straight line. So if I had to draw this as a straight line, I should have taken this straight line straight forward. And I should have taken this line as a straight line here. And then this line, I should have taken it as a straight line here. 
now instead of taking it as q i am taking it as q dash this point i am taking it as r dash right this point i am taking it as p dash so all these places now so which places i am talking about as upon sp dash right this becomes what bp dash right this becomes what cp dash p dash now i repeat csr dash is a straight line this is the straight angle bisector line similarly bsq dash is a straight angle bisector line similarly asp dash is a straight angle bisector line so now if i am finding out the straight angle bisector line i want to find out the ratio of as versus sp dash this ratio comes out to be b plus c is to a similarly can i find out the ratio of bs is to sq dash bs is to sq dash so bs is to sq dash will be what the sum of these two sides which is a plus c is to b and the third that we are trying to find out here is cs is to sr dash so cs is to sr dash will be just like saying sum of these two sides which is a plus b divided by c right at the same time now so here the lengths that we had assumed so these lengths actually these lengths were not bp this length u was nothing but bp dash so i'll just write it for your convenience here the length u that we had imagined here u is nothing but bp dash the length v that we had imagined is nothing but bq dash and the length w that we had assumed here the length w is nothing but ar dash right so if i know bp dash is u in that case p dash c becomes how much a minus u right and in that case now cq dash so now when i know cq dash now cq dash becomes how much b minus v and the third so we are now basically talking about br dash so br dash in that case becomes how much c minus w hope you have understood this taking this forward now can i say bp dash bp dash is to p dash c is c is to b similarly can i say br dash is to r dash a is a is to b cq dash is to q dash a is equal to a dash c this you can prove it for yourself so this you can take it as a homework and you can prove it for yourself these are very important because the time when we'll be doing coordinate geometry or the time when we'll be doing trigonometry will be using all these things effectively hope you have understood this finally now when i talk about i have taken this diagram here and now what i am talking about is i am basically talking about bp c and i am talking about arb aq c keeping in mind that bsq is not a straight line which was a straight line here in this triangle bsq dash straight line here was csr dash straight line from this vertex was asp dash right we have already proved that all these triangles are congruent now when all these triangles are congruent i mean all these triangles are congruent means we are basically talking about pair of triangles so this triangle is congruent with this triangle so which is just like saying these two sides would be equal and these two sides would be equal right so if i am saying this side is u as we had assumed that bp dash so maybe it is better that we take another value otherwise this becomes slightly confusing so now just for the sake of understanding we are taking some other variables so i'll take some other variables like lmn so i'm taking the length of bp as l and i know that these two triangles are congruent now i know that congruent triangles will have equal sides wherein this third side is common to both so if this side 
I'm talking about side BP. If it is equal to L, in that case, the side BR also becomes L. The same thing I can use here. So now these two sides will also be equal. Now, when we are saying that these two triangles are equal, these two triangles would be equal when their corresponding sides are also equal. I mean, equal means we are talking about these two triangles are congruent. So when these two triangles are congruent, this being the third side, if this side is this, so this side also becomes equal to this. So from here you get some SR is equal to SQ is equal to SP and this becomes the in radius R. So from here, just imagine that you have taken the compass wherein this, uh, the needle of the compass is here and this is the length where the pencil point is here and now if I draw, I will get a circle. So this is the circle that you get inside. So in circle, in center results into an in radius and in radius because of the in radius you are able to draw a circle inside which touches all the three sides at a point and that point is known as RQP and giving a technical name to this point is this is known as the point of tangent. This acts now, the line BR acts as a tangent, same as line AR, same as line AQ, same as line QC. All these lines, even CP and BP, they act as tangents to a common circle. So coming back, so if AR is equal to M, the length of AR, similarly the length of AQ will also be equal to M. Now the length of CP, if I assume it to be an N, so this will also be equal to an N. So this is just like saying, these two sides are equal and even these two sides are equal. So you are able to establish a theorem and now coordinate geometry, linear geometry gets converted into curvilinear geometry. Curvilinear, we are now we are talking about a circle. Right? And we know that now, so even if I talk about, so as we have already talked about, if I talk about the triangle BS P. We talk about the triangle BSP is congruent to this. So all these areas, I mean, these two areas would be equal in these two areas would be equal. These two areas would be equal. This will happen in case of a scalene triangle. In case of an isosceles triangle, we know that the, if, if I assume that angle B is equal to angle C, in that case, exactly. I mean, there will be four triangles which will have equal areas. And if I assume that all this is an equilateral triangle, in that case, all this, these six triangles will have the same area. So this is how you become progressive in terms of your learning and you are able to combine something that you have already done in the past with something that you are doing. But this doing becomes really productive if you are able to prove each and every theorem, take theorems as questions and that is how you progress. This process will help you not to forget the theorems and any question that comes to you will be just like any other theorem that, that you are supposed to apply. And you will not be required to mug up the theorems. If you feel that this video was really informative, please do not forget to like, share and subscribe to our channel. If you have already done so, click on the bell icon and select all so that you start receiving updates from us regularly. If you want us to do some specific videos on specific topics, put it in the comment section. Thank you so much. Until next we meet. Goodbye.